Carbohydrates, when they get absorbed, raise the blood sugar. And that raising of blood sugar raises a hormone called insulin. That insulin lowers the blood sugar, but it also tells the body to make fat and store fat. As we just saw, Marty Metabolism will fire up the Get Hungry program when the Nautilus needs building materials and tools. But of course, Marty also makes you hungry when the ship is low on fuel. You mean we get hungry when we need fuel? Did you figure that out all by yourself? Duh! Yes, it's obvious we need FUD for fuel. But your ship's fuel system is a lot more complicated than you might think. When I was a kid, I thought our digestive systems worked something like the gas tank in a car. Fill the tank with food and your body burns it for fuel. When the tank is nearly empty, the low fuel light starts flashing and you get hungry again. In fact, your body's fuel system is almost nothing like a car's. The Nautilus has lots of fuel tanks and they're spread out all over the ship. Some of the tanks store sugar and some store fat. Those are the ship's two main fuels. But to avoid damaging the entire system, the Nautilus has to burn the right mix of fuels at the right time. Dr. Fishbones will explain why. The supercomputer we call the brain is made mostly from fat. But to stay powered up, it absolutely, positively needs a steady supply of a sugar called glucose. Glucose travels through the bloodstream, which is why we doctors also call it blood sugar. Without glucose, the brain will shut down, and then so will the Nautilus. So the ship's bloodstream must always contain some glucose. But if there's too much glucose in the bloodstream, everything starts to break down. The hoses crack, the spark plugs misfire, the engine sputters, and the cells become damaged. To put it in medical terms, high blood sugar is toxic. There are a ton of negative effects to elevated blood sugar. I mean, for one thing, it damages the kidney cells. It's, it's extremely damaging to the kidney cells to have long-term elevated blood sugar. It causes cataracts. It, uh, it causes damage to the interior of the blood vessels. Almost all of our degenerative diseases are related to the damage that's done by excess glucose. Keeping the glucose level from going too high or too low is one of Marty's most important jobs. So let's see how he does it. Suppose you open the hatch and deliver a meal of scrambled eggs cooked in butter and potatoes fried in lard. That meal contains proteins, fats, cholesterol, and carbohydrates. The carbohydrates are in the form of starch, which means glucose molecules bound together. Before any of the nutrients reach the bloodstream, they have to pass through tiny security filters that protect the ship. So a crew member we'll call Chef Chop Chop breaks the FUD into tiny bits. Chop Chop takes the protein from the eggs and slices it into tiny building blocks called amino acids. She chops the fats from the butter and lard into fatty acids. To process the potatoes, she has to break down the fibers and rip open the cells to release the starchy carbohydrates. Then she slices the starch into little bits of glucose. The bits of FUD that shouldn't go into the bloodstream continue moving through the digestive system and end up in the garbage chute. But the nutrients Chef Chop Chop sliced into little bits slip through the security filters and into the bloodstream. That's where Marty takes over. Marty will probably set aside the cholesterol, the amino acids, and some of the fatty acids for building materials. But that still leaves more fuel in the bloodstream than the Nautilus can use right away. So which does Marty burn first, the glucose or the fats? Well, as Dr. Fishbones and the human doctors just told us, high blood sugar will damage the Nautilus. So as glucose enters the bloodstream, Marty's first priority is to keep the blood sugar from going too high. That means he needs to store the fat and burn away the sugar first. To accomplish that task, Marty releases a hormone called insulin. Dr. Fishbones can explain what insulin does. To put it simply, Captain, insulin's job is to push nutrients into cells. It pushes glucose into the muscle and organ cells, then they burn the glucose for fuel. At the same time, insulin pushes fat into the fat cells and closes the doors to keep the fat inside. That way, the ship continues burning glucose instead of fat. Finally, insulin pushes glucose into storage tanks called glycogen stores. Together, these actions lower the blood sugar after a new delivery of FUD. By burning away the high blood sugar, Marty prevents damage to the ship. 
But if the ship burns too much glucose, there won't be enough of it left to fuel the brain. So as blood sugar starts to drop, Marty's job is to switch most of the ship back to burning fat. Dr. Fishbones will explain how he does it. Marty burns fat by dialing back the amount of insulin in the bloodstream. As insulin drifts away, the doors to the fat cells open up. Most cells in the Nautilus actually prefer fat for fuel, so they switch to burning fat, which leaves more glucose for the brain. Marty can also add glucose to the fuel mix by opening up the glycogen stores. So as you can see, your fat cells aren't just ugly piggy banks where the Nautilus stores extra calories if you eat too much. Fat cells are a crucial part of the fuel system. By choosing when to store fat and when to burn it, Marty keeps the fuel mix exactly where it needs to be. It's a fine example of how brilliantly the Nautilus was programmed. But as a programmer, I know that apps are written to fit their environment. If the environment changes, even the most brilliant app can produce bad results. The app that controls the fuel system worked perfectly for 99% of human history. That's because it was programmed for an environment full of real foods. But since then, our food has changed so drastically it's as if the Nautilus traveled to a completely different planet. And then another, and another. And that's when the Nautilus started breaking down far more often than it should. Mm -hmm.